Chapter 7, Hello Alkane. In this chapter, we will look into introduction to Hello Alkane, the first one, okay, this one, uh, which will uh, include no the nomenclature, classification of Hello Alkane, and also the polarity of Hello Alkane. And the second one is reaction of haloalkane. There are two types of reaction for haloalkane. The first one is elimination and the second one is nucleophilic substitution. And after that, we will look into the mechanism of haloalkane, which is SN2 and SN1. And the last one is the action of, of haloalkane. So basically, a haloalkane is a carbon, which is a sp3 carbon, which is bonded to the halogen atom. This X is halogen atom. So the, the sp3 carbon is partially positive because it is less electronegative compared to the halogen atom. Okay, now let us learn on how do we name the haloalkane. So basically, there are two types of haloalkane. There are straight chain haloalkane and also a cyclic haloalkane. So this is for the straight chain haloalkane. Okay, so what are the rules for naming straight chain haloalkane? The first rule is the parent chain is numbered as 1, nearest to the first substituent regardless it's alkyl or halogen. And rule number two, okay, that when three or more substituents are present, begin at the substituent that leads to the lowest set of location number. Okay, let us look at the first uh, example for uh, the structural formula. So this carbon is numbered as carbon number one and this is carbon number two. Why? Why not this carbon? Okay, so this is because when you number this carbon as carbon number one, at the second carbon, you already met the first substituent. But if you take this carbon as carbon number one, at the second carbon, you haven't met any substituent yet. Okay, so therefore, the priority goes to here. That is why this carbon is numbered as carbon number one. So if you if you number this carbon as carbon number one, the substituent are five bromo because this at carbon number five we have bromo, and we have two four dimethyl, and the parents uh, is the the parent chain is heptane because there are seven carbon in total. Therefore, the IUPAC name goes five bromo. So this one is B. 2, 4, dimethyl. So if you have dimethyl, we don't count the D. We count the M. Okay? Dimethyl heptane. So uh, because in the alphabetical order, B comes before M. So the IUPAC name goes 5 bromo 2, 4, dimethyl heptane. And this is the classic. Uh, this is a secondary haloalkane. Why? Because as you can see here, this bromine is connected to carbon that is connected to another two carbon, one and two. Therefore, this is a secondary haloalkane. Okay. Let us look at the second example okay in this second example we numbered this carbon as carbon number one why because when we numbered this as carbon number one at carbon number two we meet the bromine which is b but if we number this carbon as carbon number one at carbon number two we meet ch3 which is methyl so since b comes before m Okay, so the name will be 2-bromo, 5-methyl and hexane as the parent chain. Okay, so this is also a secondary haloalkane because this bromine is connected to carbon that is connected to 2-carbon. Okay, right, let us look at example number 3. Okay, so in this example, we, uh, we numbered this carbon as carbon number 1. Because if we number this carbon as carbon number one, we won't get the lowest set of location number. Okay, let me show you. 
Okay, if I number this carbon as carbon number one, this one it will be number two, this one number three, number four, number five, number six. So the combination will be uh, at carbon number three, we have bromo. So three bromo and also three chloro. And at carbon number five, we have two methyl. So five, five dimethyl. Okay, so look at the combination. So here we have 3, 3, 5, 5. But we, if we number this carbon as carbon number 1, we have 2, 2, 4, 4. So which one is the lowest set of location number? This one. So that is why we number the carbon starting from here. Okay, and this, also, this is also a secondary halo alkyl. Okay, because the bromine and chlorine is connected to carbon that is connected to another two carbon. And the last one is, this one is 3-iodo-3-methylhexane. How do I get the name? Okay, we number this one as carbon number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4, number 5, number 6. So we have hexane as the parent chain. So at carbon number 3, we have iodine and methyl. So which one comes first? I or M. I. Therefore, the name will be 3-iodo, 3-methylhexane. And this is a tertiary haloalkane because this halogen is connected to carbon that is connected to 1, 2, 3 carbon. So, that is why it is a tertiary haloalkane. So this is the nomenclature of haloalkane for cyclic haloalkane, okay? So what is the rule for naming the cyclic haloalkane? So the first rule is if no or only one substituent is present, no number is needed. And rule number two, when two different substituents are present, number the ring by alphabetical priority. And number three, when three or more substituents are present, begin at the substituent that leads to the lowest set location number. Okay, let us look at the first example here. Okay, the first example, we have only one substituent. So, this is for the first rule. No or only one substituent is present, no number is needed in the IUPAC name. Therefore, the name goes iodocyclohexane. And this is a secondary haloalkane because this carbon is connected to two other carbon. Okay? So, example number two. Now, we have two different substituents. So, when two different substituents are present, number the ring by alphabetical priority. So, this F is fluoro. It starts with F. And this substituent we call ethyl. If one carbon is methyl, so if two substituents we call it as ethyl. So it is E. So which one comes first? Is it E or F? So in alphabetical order, E comes before F. So this one should be the first substituent. So this carbon is numbered as 1. And the carbon bearing the fluorine atom is carbon number 2. Therefore, the substituent for this structural formula is 1-ethyl-2-fluoro. And the parent of this structural formula is cyclopentane. Therefore, the IUPAC name goes 1-ethyl-2-fluoro-cyclopentane. Okay, and this is also a secondary haloalkane because this fluorine is connected to carbon that is connected to another two carbon. Okay, for the third example here, we have one, two, and three substituents. Okay, so when there are three or more substituents are present, begin at the substituent that leads to the lowest set of location number. So here, in this case, we take this carbon as carbon number one, two, three, and four, because this uh, combination, okay, will lead 
to the lowest set of location number. So the, num the name for this structural formula goes 4 fluoro 1 1 dimethyl cyclohexane. And this is also a secondary haloalkane because this fluorine is connected to carbon that is connected to 2 carbon. And the last one, example number four, we have cis 13 dichlorocyclopentate. Why it is 13? Because this is number S, this carbon is number S1, 2, and 3. Okay, we don't number the carbon as 1, 2, 3, 4 because it will lead to the highest set of location number wrong okay so we take one two three therefore the name will go cis one three dichloro cyclopentane so this is also a secondary haloalkane polarity of cx bond so x here is the halogen where this halogen are in group 17 Okay, so the electronegative halogen X creates a polar CX bond, making the C atom is the electron deficient atom. Okay, so what is electronegative? Remember, the definition of electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract the shed electron towards itself. So if we say the halogen is more electronegative compared to C, means that this halogen has the higher ability to attract the shed electron towards itself okay making this region the electron rich region while this region is the electron poor region so when this carbon is uh, the electron poor region it can be attacked by nucleophile so we call this site as the electrophilic site okay while the electron rich region is the nucleophilic site which the which is site that has a uh, high uh, density of electron. So the chemistry of haloalkane is determined by this polar CX bond, CX bond. means that um, many of the chemical reaction of haloalkane okay, is due to the polarity of this CX bond. Okay, so reactions of haloalkane. So basically, we have eight reactions of haloalkane okay the first type of reaction is elimination reaction okay and the name of the reaction is dehydrohalogenation to produce alkene so which one is the reaction okay this one this reaction this one is the elimination reaction where in this reaction we eliminate hydro hydrogen and also halogen okay to produce an alkene so it's easy to predict the final product okay you just need to uh, discard hi because it's d d here means remove okay dehydro remove hydro halogen remove halogen so if you remove both this okay you will get the double bond here the first reaction for nucleophilic substitution type of reaction is reaction with sodium hydroxide okay so in this case this is the reaction okay this is the reaction with sodium hydroxide so what happened here this hi okay when you react uh, this haloalkane with sodium hydroxide the a nucleophilic from sodium hydroxide which is OH minus will substitute the I will substitute our halogen okay so that is uh, that's why we call it as nucleophilic substitution so this OH minus will, uh, will go into the I spot so that is your final structure the second reaction is reaction with alkoxide ion. So, this is sodium alkoxide. Uh, how do we deduce the nucleophilic from this sodium alkoxide? So, uh, in this uh, compound, we have Na+, okay, and 
OCH3. So this is the alkoxide ion. So this is our nucleophile. So, so this nucleophile will substitute the I spot. Okay, so that is our final structure. Okay, the next reaction is reaction with excess ammonia. So in uh, this reaction, the nucleophile from excess ammonia, which is ammonium ion, okay, will substitute the halogen spot. Okay, the next one is KCN reaction with potassium cyanide or sodium cyanide. In this case, the cyanide ion, which is the nucleophile, will substitute the I spot. So that is our final product. The next one is reaction with alcohol. So in this reaction, what is the nucleophile that is that is in the alcohol? So many people, many students get confused. They said that the nucleophile in alcohol is OH minus. No, it is wrong. This is not the nucleophile in alcohol. The nucleophile in alcohol is, in this case, we have this alcohol. So the nucleophile is CH3, CH2. O minus that is the nucleophile while the electrophile is H plus so since this is our nucleophile so this nucleophile will will substitute the I spot and that is our final product okay next one is the reaction with acetic ion so this is our acetic ion this is our nucleophile here so this nucleophile substitute the halogen spot so that is the final product and the last reaction under the nucleophilic substitution type is reaction with uh water so this one in this reaction the oh from water because this is the nucleophile from water so the oh will uh, substitute the halogen spot so that is the final product Mechanism of haloalkane. So we have two type of mechanism for haloalkane. We have SN2 mechanism and also SN1 mechanism. So SN2 stands for bimolecular nucleophilic substitution, where, uh, where this bimolecular correspond to this number two. Okay, nucleophilic is the N and substitution is the S. Okay, it's in SN2 mechanism, the rate determining step involves two molecules, which is haloalkane and also nucleophile. What are the rate determining steps? So if we look at the uh, this rate of reaction, okay, this uh, uh, in this rate of reaction, we can see that the rate is equal to Kr is the haloalkane and Nu is the nucleophile. So th these are the molecules that involve in uh, determining the rate of reaction. So that is why SN2 is, uh, is the second order kinetics reaction. So let's say we have this reaction, we have haloalkane and also the nucleophile here is hydroxide ion. Okay, so if we want to write the rate equation, okay, it will be rate equal to the rate constant K and the haloalkane and also the nucleophile. Okay, so it is second order overall so for sn1 it stands for unimolecular nucleophilic substitution unimolecular correspond to the number one here nucleophilic is n substitution is s okay the rate determining step involve only haloalkane so if you have this reaction uh, in order to write the rate equation okay we have rate rate constant and also the haloalkane here so the rate of reaction depends on the on the haloalkane that is uh, that is why it is first order overall and the mechanism will be further discussed in class usage of hello alkane the main use of hello alkane is to synthesize grignard reagent okay so we have hello alkane here so this is our hello alkane when we react our haloalkane with magnesium and dry ether, we will form a grignard reagent. This is our grignard reagent. And our grignard reagent can further synthesize to form alkane. 
to form alcohol, the three classes of alcohol, primary alcohol, secondary alcohol, and also a tertiary alcohol. And also, our Grignard reagent can be used to synthesize the carboxyl acid. Okay, so the first reaction is when we react our Grignard reagent, in this case, CH3CH2MgCl, we react this Grignard reagent with H2O, we will form an alkane. Okay? And the second reaction, we want to form a primary alcohol. So if you want to form a primary alcohol, you just simply use the formaldehyde as the reagent and the condition is 1 dry ether, number 2 H3O+. So we, you will get the primary alcohol. Okay? The next reaction is we want to form a secondary alcohol. So if you want to form a secondary alcohol, you just change this H with R, with 1R in dry ether and also H3O+, so you can form a secondary alcohol. If you want to form a tertiary alcohol here, this one is tertiary alcohol, you just change both of the H here with R. Okay, and then you will get a tertiary alcohol. How about to, to form a carboxylic acid? If you want to form a carboxylic acid from a green nut reagent, okay, you can react your green nut reagent with carbon dioxide and H3O+. So you will get a carboxylic acid here. Okay, so this green nut reagent is actually a very common reaction. It's a common reaction in addition uh, the number of carbon uh, to your structural formula that's all for chapter 7 hello alkin thanks for watching